Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video. Now a few years ago, almost pretty much exactly to this day a few years ago, I did a setup video for the Logitech Flight Yacht system pretty much when Flight Simulator 2020 first released. Well that video's a little bit outdated now, we've had several updates in the sim and a couple of my own settings have changed with the Logitech Flight Yacht system. So I'm going to do a 2023 edition of my settings for the Logitech Flight Yacht system. Ignore the fact that the multi-panel and radio panel are attached. I'm not going to concentrate on them in this video. This is purely going to be a setup video for the Logitech Flight Yacht system for 2023. Well, let's not dilly-dally. Let's get on with this video. Okay, so let's first start with the primary flight control services, the elevator. Push and pull your yoke backwards and forwards, and your ailerons, your banking axis, move your, your yoke left and right. These should be set up by default, so there's nothing different here. You can see I've got a profile name, 2023 profile. Ensure, of course, that your flight yoke system is highlighted up here, so if your mouse is highlighted, Ensure that your velocity, uh, that, sorry, that your Logitech flight your system is highlighted. All these controls, if you if you buy the Logitech uh, flight your system, you get the yoke and throttle quadrant included. So it all comes under the one profile because you've got the throttle quadrant connected to your yoke. If you're doing it this way, it will all come under this one profile. I'll show you that in a moment. But elevator a ailerons, they should be set. By default, if not, take a look at that. You can see for it to work properly, you need to have the reverse axis ticked on both of them. And if you ever need to find that, go search by name, by the way. I'll show you a quick tip. Any of the settings I'm going to show you, if you need to find any of them, if I start typing in elevator axis, there you go. I just typed in elevator A and it brought up the elevator axis. So we can get rid of that and hopefully it will take us back. Now it's going to uh, show us all the different flight controls. So let's put this back to assigned. Flight control services. And primary flight control services. Not sure if this is just me. Maybe somebody can confirm. Sometimes when I open these menu, you get writing on top of writing. You probably see a lot of that in this video kind of happens since with my Logitech flight your system not quite sure what's going on there but we can we can solve that another day the thing I've changed here is the sensitivities now you can see the banking axis so basically the aileron axis left and right you can see it's axis X there I've changed these since my previous video since my original video my logitech playlist is linked down below in the, the description look through that playlist you'll see my original setup video for the logitech flight yacht system if you've not already seen it i've changed the aileron axis to minus 50 in both the plus and minus sensitivities so there you go minus 50 I've kept everything else here at default, but reactivity at 90 just behaves well for me in the aileron axis. With the elevator, keep in mind I've been using the XPC yoke. It's quite a stiff yoke, high resolution, and it just it's probably one of the finest resolution yokes out there, the uh, Honeycomb XPC yoke. But coming back to the Logitech, this was too light for me, so I've had to tone these down. I've got minus 70% sensitivities in both the plus and minus sensitivities here, as you can see. Dead zone, believe it or not, I've put a dead zone on the Logitech elevator axis of 2% and reactivity at 90%. Let me just demonstrate this in the sim. I've got a flight in progress there. 
I've got it on autopilot, so let me take it off autopilot. I'll push down. I've got to push a little bit further before the aircraft reacts. Previously, with my other settings, it would just go up and down too quickly by pushing my yoke forward to descend and pulling it back towards me to climb. It would just be too loose to mop for my liking. Um, banking left or right with the setting I've got set in it just feels more realistic. It doesn't feel sluggish. It just doesn't feel too overreactive. It doesn't feel too loose. In fact, you could turn in this a lot quicker than you could in something like the XPC yoke. I'm not sure how realistic that is, but it feels great in the sim. So when I'm flying GA aircraft, and this setup is going to be mainly for GA aircraft. I've got the 182 here, but the 172 should be very similar. Just feels nice. So when I'm coming into land, say that's the runway ahead of me, I can flare nice and easy. As you can see, I can get some fantastic landings with these settings. So there you go. So let's just go back to control options. Logitech flight yoke selected. Flight control services. So those are my primary flight control services. The other thing I want to show you is power management. Again, these should be set up by default. If not, I'm going to open the throttle mixture and propeller. Basically, by default, your lever with the black topper should be your throttle and that should be there by default if not this is the way i've got it set up reverse axis ticked mixture is your red so I, I put a picture for you onto the right of the screen there your lever with the red topper and as you can see that works fine and the propeller is the one with the blue topper so let's just put the mixture and propeller back to full for, for the moment so as you can see, they all work fine. If you don't have them for some reason, I'll leave that on screen f for you for a second. Ignore the toggle reverse thrust. I may take that off. It's not really useful for GA aircraft. In fact, it may be fine for something like the airliners, but not for GA aircraft generally. So I've got rid of that for now. So there you go. I'll leave that open and we shall continue. So continuing with my control setup on my Logitech Flight Yacht system, let's get back into control options. Ensure that the Logitech Flight Yacht system is selected. It is now 2023 profile. On the left hand handle, left hand side handle, on the back of the handle you got a little red button. Let me show you a picture on screen. I've set that up for my brakes. Let this screen just update a second. Essentially, if I'm coming into brake, now I do have a set of rudder pedals near my feet, my Velocity 1 rudder pedals. I've got toe brakes, so I can tip forward on them. I like to have a secondary brake backup. Now, if you don't want that, personally, when I'm coming into land, if I need to brake quickly, I don't reach my toe brakes in time for some reason. I've got that button I can press for my brakes, it will slow my aircraft down. If you don't want to have that, you can have that set up for something else, but that's what I've got that button set up for. On the front of the left hand handle, ignore the hat switch for now, I'll come back to that, but you've got that rocker switch up and down. I used to have that set as uh, my flaps, I've changed my flaps to something else now. Instead, the rocker switch, I've got it set up, not under power management, I've got it set up under autopilot. And like, again, just let this screen update. I've got it set, set up as increase autopilot reference speed altitude. Moving the hat switch up will increase the reference altitude. Moving the rocker switch down will decrease the autopilot reference altitude. Let me show you that in the sim. So there you go. That's my Cessna 182RG. That's my assigned autopilot altitude. If I wanted to increase that on the left hand handle, like I just showed you, I'll move the rocker switch up. And I can increase that autopilot assigned altitude. I can use a bit of vertical speed. Vertical speed nose up. And it will increase to that 1500 assigned altitude. I've just set, if I want to lower that, move the rocker switch down. It goes up and down in increments of 100. So 1300, back to 1500. 
that's what it does. Let's get back to control options. So that's on the left handle. Let's move to the right hand side handle. You've got a rocker switch moving up and down. I've kept that the way it was in my original settings video as control trimming services. This writing on writing is distracting. I'll get to the bottom of it. But elevator trim nose up. Essentially, I move that rocker switch. I'm showing you a picture to the right there. I move that rocker switch down to trim nose up. And I move the rocker switch up to trim nose down. So don't be confused about that. So I'm moving the rocker switch down to trim nose up. I'm moving the rocker switch up to trim nose down. If you need to find these, like I showed you before, just go by search by name. Just start typing in elevator trim. Elevator trim. There you go. Oh, get out of it. Go back at them on that. And it'll bring up the elevator trim nose up and down in this little box there. So you can find it easier by going search by name, essentially. So that's self-explanatory, I don't need to explain trim to you, but it works brilliantly on the Logitech Flight Yacht system. Using buttons for trim I'm not a fan of, but on the Logitech it works absolutely fantastic. Sticking to the right hand handle, you've got a rocker switch moving left and right. This is now my, I've changed this to, let me just think, it's autopilot increase heading bug basically. So under instruments and systems, I've got it as increase heading bug and decrease heading bug. So moving that hat switch to the right will increase the heading bug, moving it to the left will decrease it. Self-explanatory, but let me just show you in the sim. That's my heading bug, that triangle on the 182. I'll move that, I'm in heading mode, so I'll move the rocker switch to the left. It will follow it, the autopilot to the left, move it to the right. It will follow the autopilot heading bug to the right. So once again, quite self-explanatory. So that's under instruments and settings. But like I said, go by search by name. Flight instruments, if you're having trouble finding this, let the screen update. So just start typing in increase heading bug. Or, yeah, increase heading bug. And then set your rocker switch to the right to that on the right handle and type in decrease heading bug in search by name and you can find it that way. The only other thing I want to show you here is that big button on the right handle. Show you a picture on screen. People have that as push to talk. I've got mine set up. Let me just think. Oh yeah, it's under camera. I had to think for a moment there. Oh, come on screen. Do update. It's under camera and camera mode switches if I can get to it. I'm just going to let this writing update. It, it's a bit of a pain, but it does update. There we go. Camera mode switches. It's basic, basically cockpit, exter cockpit slash external view mode. And it does what it says on a tin there. It will toggle between your cockpit and external mode. When you press that big red button, that's what I've got it set for. So in the sim. Press the button. Go into external mode. Press it again. Get back into cockpit. It's handy to have a handy button, a close by button for toggling external and cockpit. The only thing, other thing I want to show you on the yoke for the moment. Let's get back to control options. On the front of the actual Logitech uh, yoke unit, you've got the three buttons there. Function, stop, start, or start, stop, and reset. Reset, I've put as my landing gear. Toggle landing gear, there you go. So I press the reset button, get external, press my reset button, landing gear comes down, press it again, landing gear goes up. So control options, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to open all those settings I've just explained, so landing gear, toggle landing gear, that's the reset button on the front of the yoke system, the autopilot. For now, these are what i got set up. I'm going to set some up with you in a moment. Increase autopilot reference altitude. So on your left hand side handle, that rocker switch, increase and decrease. Basically your autopilot assigned altitude. Instruments and settings. Flight instruments. 
increase decrease heading bug that's your left and right just show you quickly on screen again your left and right rocker switch on the right hand side handle so that's what that's for and then we go to camera camera mouse switches the big red button to toggle between my external and internal view and I'm missing well yeah just flight control services that would be a trim wouldn't it control trimming services so elevator nose up elevator nose down as was set in my original video that rocker switch on the right handle to control your elevator trim nose up and down so there you go those are the ones I've just showed you So if you need to find them, go search by name and you can input them yourselves. Let's move on with more settings. So let's talk about views, everybody's favourite subject, eh? Under the Velocity 1 Flight Yacht System 2023 profile, it's pretty similar to what I had before. In cockpit camera, I've got previous pilot position. I've pushed my hat switch down on my left handle. Next pilot position, push it up. I'll show you this in the sim. I think this is all set by default anyway. Quick view right and quick view left. That's the way I prefer it with the Logitech Flight Yacht system. I can show you a video down below in the description where you can use your hat switch to smoothly lock around. But this is the way I prefer it in the Logitech Flight Yacht system. When I'm down, I push my hat switch down and I get to so previous pilot position and push my hat switch down, get to my instrument views. I go left and right on my hat switch to cycle between the instrument views. If you need to find these, you're struggling to find these, you want to set these up, just type in here. For example, like I showed you before, but I'm going to show you again. Search by name, previous instrument, there you go. Just start, start typing it and it will come up previous instrument. If you want to go to the next instrument. Just type in next instrument view and then you can type you can set your hat switch up to go left and right between your instruments so let's get rid of all that let's collapse all that put that back to assigned and let's hope this behaves oh there you go well it's open everything which i didn't really want it to do but it saves me <laughs> opening the menus again so the cockpit camera once again quick view left and right move once i'm in my default cockpit view move it left or right i'll get a quick view left or right pushing the hat switch down will take me down to my instruments pushing it up will push me up to the over the nose of the aircraft or back to my default view of them down to my instruments in instrument views previous instrument instrument view left and right hat switch left and right previous is hat hat switch to the left next instrument view hat switch to the right i'll show you this in operation as i showed you before switching between cockpit and external mode there other thing i want to show you here though let's go back i think it's under general options under camera in general options so general options camera you want to have the quick view function as toggle. If you put this on hold, it means you've got, once you release your hat switch to the left, it will just spring you back. Put your quick view function to toggle like this in general options camera, if it's not already. And what this does, oh, I'm excellent. I thought it paused for a second there. If I move my hat switch to the left, I look left, hat switch to the right, I and I can release the hat switch, it'll just keep to the right. Because I've got toggle, like I showed you. When I said next instrument view, pilot, pilot position rather, that's the next pilot position up over the nose of your aircraft. Previous pilot position is down. Press it down again, you're in your instruments. Go left and right, you can cycle between all your instruments. Pushing it back up again would take you to your default view. So that's what I've got set up for the cockpit. Now, for the external view, rather than me going through all this in this video, it's going to make this video extra long. I'm going to link a video down below how to look around your aircraft. It's quite a popular video in external camera smoothly so you can pan around smoothly. I'll show you my settings in the sim in external camera if it behaves. So essentially, I've put external camera look up. 
look right, look left, hat switch left, look down, hat switch down. Go and look at the video I'm linking down in the description about looking around ex in external mode freely. But these are the settings. If you need to copy this, again, go search by name, external view, look up. Copy these down, write them down on a piece of paper, and then you could type them all in and set your hat switch. And the hat switch will correspond. Look up, hat switch up. Look right, hat switch right. Look left, hat switch left. Look down, hat switch down. And of course, if you use your button to get into external view like I showed you before, move your hat switch around, you can pan around freely. As simple as that. Let's carry on with more settings. So let's continue setting up these buttons now. I'm going to go into control options. I'm going to show you the buttons on the throttle quadrant. There's six buttons, T1 to T6. Let me show you first, T1 and T2. Showing you down here a picture. I've got these set up simply as my flaps. So flight control services, secondary control services, increase flaps and decrease. So T2, moving the rocker switch down will increase flaps. Moving the rocker switch up, T1 will decrease. Be careful there with flaps. You don't want extend and retract. Extend flaps will extend your flaps all the way down. So there's no increments. And retract flaps will retract your flaps all the way up in no increments. The setting, correct setting to have to do it in increments is increase and decrease. And it's quite self-explanatory. Let me get into the sim. There's my flaps lever. I'm going to press T2. It will de increase the flaps. Go outside. You can see flaps on my aircraft. Press it again. Autopilot's going to mount. It will increase my flaps another segment. Better take them back up. So I'm pressing T1 to take my flaps all the way up. Just like that. Let's continue Control options. I'm going to show you now T3, T4. These are bespoke settings. T3, I'm going to go search by input and press T3. It's toggle nameplates. So essentially what this will do is, well, let me show you. T3. So let's go back. Get external. You can see a couple of people in the distance there. I'll hit T4. Oh, they've disappeared. I think I'm a little bit too far. Let me use my rocker switch to move my heading just to the left a little bit. See if I can find them. That was bad timing, chaps, for you to disappear. If they were there, if you were in a group flight and you can't see because of all the nameplates, you're coming down to a runway, it's happened to me, it's good to have a button assigned to toggle nameplates. I'll see if they reappear, but you would hit T3 and it will di their nameplates will disappear. Hit it again, they will reappear. I'll just go back to control options, hope they reappear. Let me show you a picture again of T3, T4. T4, search by input. This is bespoke because I own flow. If you own flow, you know about this. You need to set a button called help menu. So that's what this is. So if you own flow, I've got my T4 set up to bring up my flow wheel so i'll hit t4 i can show you this one it'll bring up my flow wheel i'm not going to show you flow in this video but you can set your time weather and even to change service here if you want to very handy flow hit t4 again flow wheel will disappear are those people back they are not what i'm going to do i'm going to continue flying here see if i can find them and I'm going to show you more settings. Okay, so the last set of buttons I want to show you is basically I don't have anything for T5 and T6. I want to set these up with you. That's the idea. So for T6 on my Logitech Flight Yacht system, so T6, I always like that as toggle parking brake. So I'm going to go in, search by name. Just to prove this works, if you ever need to set a button, just type it in, the name of it. Toggle, park, so just toggle park, we'll bring up toggle parking brakes. Click in the box here, click and start scanning, gonna press my T6 button. That will toggle my parking brakes, validate. Apply and save. I'm gonna do T5 the old fashioned way. 
Let's just collapse all that and put this back to... Actually, I want it on. All. Filter to all. Because I want to go under autopilot. I want to find the old-fashioned way. Toggle autopilot master. Toggle autopilot master. So I could turn my autopilot on or off. Go search by scanning. I'm going to click T5. Validate. And there you go. I've set them up with you. So them. So now we go collapse all them. <clears throat> collapse all them. Go to filter to all. Uh, assigned. Under autopilot. All I've got there is increase, like I showed you before, increase and decrease the autopilot assigned altitude and toggle autopilot master. If you don't have flow, like I showed you before, you don't want the toggle nameplates. Uh, T3 and T4 you can set as nav mode and heading mode if you want to. I just prefer it this one. I do have the multi-panel. Keep that in mind. There's one last button I want to set up. Let's see if I can search by this. I want to reset my cockpit view. Reset cockpit reset cockpit view the button i'm going to use for this is on the front of my yoke system again and that's the start stop button pressing that button if i press that button now doesn't do anything to the yoke the clock stays the same unless you click function it won't do anything function will bring up the stopwatch and then you can press up stop start and goodness knows what but pressing start or reset by themselves when you're on the sort of main screen on the front of the oak. They don't do anything unless you assign them to something. So I'm going to press that stop start to reset my cockpit view. Click in that box, click in start scanning, press that button stop start. Validate. Apply and save. Go back. Resume. Let the sim catch up. Oh there's nameplates. I'm going to click now the nameplates appeared. I'm going to click show you before. Toggle nameplates, click my T3. There you go. Nameplates disappeared, click T3 again. Nameplates reappeared. If you've got a lot of people on the runway, it's disappeared now. <laughs> well, he was there for a moment. Let's jump into the cockpit. I've got autopilot on at the moment. So if I click my T5 button, move the mouse, you can see the autopilot's turned off. Reset my cockpit view, start, stop. There you go, I'm into my default view. I can use the controls I set up before to fly around. These feel lovely. Trim a little bit. Elevator. Ailerons moving around. Oh, lovely. I'm going to turn my autopilot back on. It's back on, I believe. And heading mode. Oh, I'm just going to use my motor panel for this. It doesn't matter. But set up a switch for that if you want to. Well, listen, chaps, there's my updated settings for the Logitech Flight Yacht System for 2023. I do hope this video has been helpful to you. Give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more, as always. Many more of these types of videos on their way. And I'll see you soon.